is an insane fool! Oh, oh, hi there. I didn't see you come in. <laughs> Well, last time we got this thing all tore down completely. Now before I could go big bore in the engine, modifying and rechanging the color of the frame, this is eventually gonna get like sandblasted anyway, but I, I've gotta, I need to like kinda clean this up a bit. Motor's all kinds of grimy. Uh, just need to clean some things. Cleaning, it's the thing we have to do. Also, this frame here, I was originally thinking like to do like a blackish sort of satin black, but it, it is boring. I kept thinking about that, it is boring to do all this work just to make it a main factory color you see on almost everything these days. I mean, the rally version is that color. It's like, eh, it's kind of boring. And I was kind of thinking white. White could be cool, because especially the theme we're gonna go with on the graphics. Although I do feel like white isn't that far off from the silver. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not, I, I, it's not gonna pop as much as I might like. Then somebody, by Enomoto, guy with the uh, 300 rally that came with us in Oklahoma. He's made a great suggestion in the Discord last night. He said, dude, have you thought about making this bronze? Almost like a metallic -y bronze, you know? I was like, oh my god, that would actually look really good. I was looking, we code, it's got some great options for doing that. So I'm pretty, I'm leaning that way right now. I wanted to get what you guys think though about that. And if I went that way, should I make the swing arm match? Or should I go with a different color on the swing arm? And I was even thinking if I go that far, should I consider taking the rims, my super motor rims? I wonder if like a really crazy sort of metallic -y red, like with a bunch of flake in it would look really cool. Maybe that would be fun. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that. Let's go clean the motor up a little bit. You can see a spot here I've already been kind of working on. Interesting thing with this motor is this actually is like a paint kind of coating on here. Although it looks like I gouged it real hard right there. This isn't just like raw aluminum. I don't think anyone would think it is, but I, you know, it's, it's not. Uh, I'm probably actually gonna run some of those like plastic case uh, guards when I put this back together. Cause I can see where my boots been just really tearing it up. But you guys know me, I love WD-40. It's a great product for cleaning like this. Come on with like some like a little toothbrush to kind of break things loose. Works pretty good, but sometimes I find when it's more like dirt, and this is a lot of dirt. Simple green, kind of works better for this. Wipe it down and you'll see, it look, it'll look pretty good pretty fast doing this. Both of these two are not gonna hurt the rubbers or plastics, which is why these are two really good products for things like this. On this side, I've got a bunch of just heavy stuff. I need to just kind of, I think I'm just gonna shout back some of this out. <laughs> That turned out pretty well. You know, it's all over my everything now and over my glasses and everything else, but engine looks really, really good now. See, I got a hammer under it right now. I'm not a big fan of that. I think I'm gonna build a little box for it, hold it so that it's a little more secure. That's actually better like that. Not the way I intended it to work, but that actually seems pretty good. 
<laughs> Quick and dirty cobbled together little little engine square there. <laughs> when I originally had it turned the other way, I put it down on there. It was actually resting on the shifter. So I was like, no, 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 I don't want that. I didn't intend for it to be this way, but it works. It was a little softer, shouldn't scratch anything up. By the way, that's like, uh, these are seven and a half and an 11 and a half. That was my measurements in case you want to build one of those. <laughs> Let's work on the frame now. I need to take the, there's some stickers up here on the front. Obviously these big graphics here on the side, pull those off. Luckily it doesn't matter if I scratch the frame right now because well, that's all gonna get whatever it anyway. These graphics are thick that Ulta made for this thing. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're gonna be able to go with them when we redo all this because uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of them. What's going on with those guys? I hope everything's okay. And because of that, I actually did private the video I made about me getting the graphics there just because I've had people contacting me about that they bought graphics and can't, you know, they ordered graphics and haven't gotten them or even had anyone get in touch with them. So I reached out a bunch, but I'm not sure what's going on. I just got to make that video private in the meantime because I can't have people trying to contact them to get graphics if there's something going on there. I just hope Cole's all right. I've sent him a lot of messages, haven't heard from him. I know I get contacted about it a lot. I, I don't know what's going on anymore than anybody else. And I've reached out to a lot of people. No one else seems to know what's going on right now, so. But I do have somebody else uh, worked out for graphics in the meantime. Let's give it a little heat, see if that helps. Just, just get, get them hot. <laughs> Duh. Why I got the bike flipped over like this, I've got these little tabs here uh, that used to go to something, I think maybe the ABS. These are useless now, so I'm just gonna cut them off and kind of smooth it over. When I converted this bike to the cool undertow, which used the trash can, you exposed this part of the frame, which normally had a cover over it. And the problem with that was is we had these big holes in the frame right here. There's lots of little holes in this frame and most of those are little wheat poles. You'll find a hole like maybe here, and there's another here and another. Like normally there'll be another hole somewhere downhill. So if water moisture does get in there, it has a way of draining out. Personally, this being a steel frame, I kind of hate all those and would love to just go seal them all up. So you're probably thinking, yeah, but Jake, it's fine because they're coated on the inside. Maybe. We're not gonna mess with that, but these holes back here, because they were never meant to be exposed, I found that once they were exposed, I was spraying like things like WD-40 and stuff down in there, and never found a place downhill where it came out. And so since I now had these exposed, I didn't want mud and dirt and stuff getting in there, which with the water and moisture would eventually rust it out this frame down here. So we filled them in. And I used this stuff called Sugru, which is a really good product. And it's hard as a rock on here. It survived all the junk and crap hitting it, but since we are gonna be doing some welding on the frame, we need to go ahead and remove this and actually weld it up properly. Now, I think what I might be able to do is just get a screwdriver and yeah, kind of dig into this. This stuff is really cool. Like I said, it almost becomes kind of a plasticky, rubbery sort of material. It bonds to just about everything. I didn't prep the surface at all other than just cleaning it. it. Wasn't like I sanded it or did anything fancy to it. I've started basically replacing all the GoPro mounts, uh, the sticky on them, or any of the action camera mounts, I should say. They all use that mount now with Subaru because it conforms to whatever you need it to. I knew when I did this that there was a good chance one day I'd be coming back through here and doing some welding on this frame and we'd have to dig this back out. That's why I didn't like JB weld this or something.
Got uh, the Subaru. I mean, at least I got, I think, enough knocked off to weld it. I'm sure some fell down into the frame, but it's not like it's going to hurt anything. It's just Subaru. And, you know, I'll have to get with Chris and see what he thinks is the best option. I don't know if we need to make a filler piece for this I mean, or if we can just... I feel like we might just be able to take a hammer and tap this down a bit, but there's kind of a gap right here. He'll know what to do. Chris is a guy who does things, and we'll do that. I'm gonna wipe this thing down a little more. I'm gonna go wash my hands real good. More cleaning to do here. Uh, obviously, I gotta take apart the rest of the swing arm, the linkage, all this other stuff on there. Hope you guys are enjoying this week's episode of Cleaning Stuff with Jake. So uh, I've got this pretty much broken down. I guess I still need to remove these little rubber guys. Yes, I've got, there's four of these on there. Otherwise, let's get into this engine over here, right? The main thing I'm planning on doing in the next video, well, it's either one of two things. We're either gonna be modifying the frame over at Fire Guy's house or pulling the top end off this motor. Either way, that video's already out on Patreon. You should go check it out. There are two to three videos ahead, pretty much. I, I think three is just where we've been at for like a long time now. So we're just gonna say, there are three videos ahead right now. So they're seeing all kinds, they're seeing that, and they're probably seeing both by now, as well as some other silly stuff I've done. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.